uh, let me share the screen. Uh, is the presentation visible at your end? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank yes, you. Sir. So let us start today's class. Uh, we will start with the Shanti Mantra to begin with. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Avashishyate Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Thank you. So once again, welcome to Antenna Theory and Design course, which is ECN 534. This will be introductory class. Uh, and um, I am Gaurish B. Uh, I'm working as assistant professors uh, at ANC, a TC department in IIT Roorkee. I joined very recently, like uh, three months before. Uh, my email ID is, uh, let me have the pointer. Yeah, my email ID is Gaurish B. You, have, you might have already you know, have noted it down. Uh, you can visit my homepage at gaurish.in for more details about me. So let us go into the flow of this uh, class. So the flow of the presentation will be as follows. Uh, I will start, I'll give a very brief introduction about myself uh, and then I will request all of you to give a brief introduction about yourself, each one of the students. Uh, we will go into the applications of the antenna, uh, like what are the major applications on a broader level. Uh, what are the companies working on antenna global global scenario? What is the job market in Indian scenario on antennas? Uh, what is the current job market? To be very specific. We will see course structure. What is the prerequisite for this course? Uh, what will be the weightage or the content of this course? We will decide, like, like I and you will decide in this class what should be the content and weightage of this course. And we'll finally see the course structure. Uh, finally, we will look into the course contents, probably what we'll be covering in this course, what you can expect from this course. Okay, coming to the brief introduction about myself. Oh, by the way, I have a tendency to go fast, a little bit fast. So if any one of you feel that I'm going fast, just feel free to stop me then and there itself. And you can uh, ask any clarifications if you want on any topic of the antenna or in, in general RF and microwave at any point of time. So don't hesitate. Just stop me when, as and when you feel that I'm going a little bit fast. Okay. So coming to the brief introduction about myself. Uh, so that's how I look in the photograph. Uh, and uh, I did my MTech. I'm basically from Karnataka, India. Uh, it's, a, it's a southern state. Uh, I did my MTech in IIT Delhi in RF and microwave engineering in 2013. Uh, then I worked as systems engineer in Cypress Semiconductor in Bangalore uh, in till 2014. I was mainly working on PCB antennas, PCB antennas for wireless mouse, wireless keyboards and uh, pointers, um, wireless printers. So I was working, we will come to it, uh, what, what these HID devices are. So I was mainly working on PCB antennas for Bluetooth low energy. So some of you may be aware of Bluetooth. Uh, Bluetooth low energy is a standard, which is a very energy efficient version of a Bluetooth. It's also called Bluetooth 4.0. So I was work, working on PCB antennas for Bluetooth 4.0. Then I worked on, I worked as scientist engineer in ISRO till 2017. Uh, my major work was on bandpass filters. It was totally different area for me. I was designing bandpass filters uh, in microchip technology, coaxial cavity technology, wavegate technology. Uh, and then uh, direct resonator based bandpass filters. And that is my area of specialization. Uh, so I chose the topic as my PhD topic in University of Waterloo in Canada. I completed my PhD in 2021. I took nearly three years, eight months to complete the PhD. My PhD topic was tunable bandpass filters for communication systems. Uh, my current area of expertise is also on bandpass filters, tunable bandpass, bandpass filters very specifically. Uh, but I also understand antennas. I know how to design PCB antennas and also I am a little bit aware of antennas as well. Currently I have 29 publications of which 14 are in general and 15 are in conferences. I have three US patent applications. So one of them has been granted and two Indian patent applications. 
uh, I have three awards, uh, including IMS Best Advanced Paper Award 2019, Boston. This is one of the very good. This is a topmost conference in uh, in, uh, in RF and microwave engineering, and I have two IET awards as well, general awards 2016 and 2018. Uh, this is my email ID and uh, this is my home page. Please feel free to visit my home page. And uh, this is my office. My office is in EC department, South Block at S207. So whenever you are in campus, please feel free to drop by my office and we can have a discussion on antennas and RF microwaves in general. And if you are, if you are working on filters, I'll be very happy to discuss on filters also. Okay, so that's a very brief introduction about myself. So next, I will ask each one of you to give an introduction about yourself. Uh, so what you can, so this is the bare minimum that I would like to know, like what is your name? Uh, where are you from? What is your native place? What are your career plans? And if you're a sponsored to a candidate, you can uh, let us know your current position as well. And what is your passion? May not be technical. It could be even non-technical. You may be interested in your, your hobby, maybe a, one of the passions, so you can, share that as well so what i will call uh, each one of student by name and we can you can switch on your video and then we can uh, let me stop sharing the screen by the time so you can switch on the video and you can give a brief introduction about yourself so to start with uh, yes sir visible, sir. Sir, it's visible. yeah thank you Okay, so next we will go with applications of antenna. So if, if this would have been an offline course, uh, there would be more interaction between us. But since this is an online course, I will try to make it as much as possible more interactive. However, in this course, I will, I will try to make it more of a monologue. I'm sorry for that. Uh, but let me go with the applications of the antenna. So we will look into the different applications of the antenna. You're all aware of it. So almost everybody is aware of it just to kind of motivate you and uh, just to kind of kindle the motivation we will go into the applications we will look into some companies some very it's a more of an example companies working on antennas are not ex exhaustively not all the companies some of the very well known companies which are working on antennas and different types of work nature that may be required in these companies and the job scenario in indian market so this will be very interested for the students who are uh, uh, who, who came through gate so they will be very much interested in placements so we will also look into the job scenario in the indian scenario what in the indian market on antennas okay coming to the applications of the antennas uh, as we all know any any and all rf and microwave communication system employs one or more antennas very important to note that it will, it will be at least one antenna or more antennas for example if you take a mobile handset, so this is a Samsung Galaxy S8 handset, and you will identify that there are at least eight, five antennas. For example, Wi-Fi antenna, 5G antenna, diversity antenna, once again a 5G antenna, and three antennas for carrier aggregation, low and mid and uh, low to mid band, three antennas for just for carrier aggregation, and a near field communication antenna. So you have at least five, six antennas in a mobile handset which is a good indication for antenna engineers. If you want to become an antenna engineer, this is a very good indication. There is a good demand for antennas in the mobile market. Then there is a uh, category of products called HID. HID refers to human interface devices or human interactive devices. For example, wireless mouse, wireless keyboards, printers, oh, sorry, wireless pointers, uh, remotes. So these all come under HID devices, human interface devices. And all these HID, wireless HID devices are becoming RF wireless based. It, traditionally, all of them were IR RF wireless based. They used, they used to use IR sensors, IR diodes and IR sensors and uh, they were wireless based on the IR. Now they are becoming RF based wireless. For example, the, I have shown a wireless mouse here. So, and you find an antenna here. So, which is a very simple, very small form factor antenna. Uh, it is a meandered monopole antenna. You will come across it. You will identify the antennas. We are, at the end of this course, you'll be able to identify various types of antennas used in such wireless HID devices. So, you will be having at least one antenna in all wireless 
devices so if you if you are designing this wireless mouse you should know how to design the antennas similarly wireless keyboard so wireless keyboard also uses a meander monopole antenna and this is a very popular chip uh, a wireless chip uh, rf chip nrf from nordic semiconductors nrf24 uh, crystal oscillator matching network once again if you are designing antennas you will also be required to design matching network so if you are if you end up working as an antenna engineer in one of the companies uh, you cannot tell that i don't know matching network so you should also know how to design the matching network for a given antenna it comes as a package and uh, wireless pointers or remotes for example uh, they also use antennas uh, for example you see a monopole antenna it is not meandered it is a simple monopole antenna here in my opinion this is not a very good place to place this antenna here uh, there could be a better position probably here so anyway they have placed it here so they all so wireless remotes or wireless pointers also use uh, antennas i uh, let me ask you a question in this pers- in this uh, particular aspect why do you think if you if you if you see any of the tv remotes just to take an evolution of the tv remotes when i was growing uh, all the tv remotes were ir based there used to be ir diode and ir sensor in the tv and they used to communicate through ir wirelessly through ir infrared nowadays if you see there are no ir sensors they are all rf based rf based wireless so why do you think there has been a shift from rf ir based wireless to rf based wireless why why is there is a shift in the evolution why there is an evolution towards rf based wireless and people have left the ir based wireless why do you think anybody can give your opinion you can just uh, share your opinion and i think in ir based if any obstacles occurs we can't transmit the signal properly when compared with rf maybe i don't good. know no no it's a very good to try and it's a very good answer that is also one of the reason ir based uh, is uh, very much what you say if, if there is an obstacle you cannot not transmit through the obstacle in an ir based yes that is one of the reason for example you might have seen you try to change the tv channel if somebody walks in between it does you get irritated right so we have seen a lot of advertisements like that yes that is one of the reason uh, one of the other reason is ir based is more uh, line of sight so you have to point the remote towards the tv while you know, changing the channel or controlling the parameters whereas in base it is omnidirectional so you might have already come across omnidirectional in your undergrad course so these omnidirectional patterns doesn't necessarily want the remote to be pointed towards the master device so you can point it anywhere and still the you can control the features so that is one of the major reason for using uh, the rf based remotes or rf based wireless remotes okay so this is another category of uh, devices that are available in the market which uses antennas hid devices basically they are all come under the category of human interface devices then wifi routers this is very common and almost all of you may be having in your homes so there will be more than one antennas there will be diversity antennas for div- for improving the gain so you find that uh, they will be using probably monopole antenna pcb monopole antenna or vip antennas once again a category of monopole antennas they are all very low cost low form factor antennas by the way before going to this very often the antennas used in mobile handsets and hd devices they should be low cost it cannot be very high expensive antenna it has to be very low cost antenna that's why they all use pcb antennas in these devices because the entire product cost itself is very low so the antenna cost also has to be less so very often they print the antennas in the pcb technology so that reduces the cost significantly and uh, then we come to a different category of uh, antennas called vsat antennas very small aperture terminal antennas so if you go across any of these atms and if they in the rural especially in the rural uh, sector if you go to an atm you will find an antenna over the rooftop of the atm and that connects the atm to directly to the satellite and then to the server so this antenna is very often a very high gain antenna high performance antenna it's a parabolic dish antenna which is very often used 
uh, it will be operating in C band. So nowadays they want to migrate it to KU band as well. But very often uh, the current antennas are working in the C band. So this is another category of antennas, the products where antennas are used. And then we have direct to home antenna, which has revolutionized the cable techno cable. And uh, uh, you, I think all of you may be having the, the uh, parabolic dish antenna um, used for direct to home uh, television connections. And here there are two antennas. If you see, one is a parabolic dish antenna for receiving the satellite signal. And you will have a monopole antenna in a wireless remote. So there are two antennas used in a single product, which is a very encouraging sign for an antenna engineer. Uh, this will be operating, once again, it's a parabolic dish antenna. It will be operating most probably in the KU band. And uh, the antenna used in the remote will be most probably operating, it's a PCP antenna. It will be operating in the, uh, probably in 2.5 gigahertz or 5.8 gigahertz ISM band. So they'll be using ISM band very often. Next, uh, yeah, before going to the topic, so once again, these antennas will be very high performance antenna. At the same time, the cost has to be less because these are volume products. So the cost has to be less in this direct to home, especially in direct to home antenna. Then we come to high performance antennas uh, where the performance is a key criteria, base station antennas. So you are, these are visible very widely across throughout, wherever you are, you can see base station antennas. The one, the photograph shown is an array of dipole antennas. Uh, they are very high performance antennas. You also find parabolic dish antennas, horn antennas uh, in base stations as well. For back, for backhaul communication, very often they used uh, dish antenna and horn antenna. For uh, connection through the end user, that is a mobile handset, they use the array of dipole antennas. Uh, they are high performance antennas. Uh, so they, the cost is not a problem here. Uh, but uh, the performance is to be very high, very, very high. Then comes once again, a category of high performance antennas in the radar. So with the radar applications, we have radar antennas. The one shown here is a dish antenna, parabolic dish antenna, and it is fed through waveguide horn. And it's a very high gain antenna, very narrow beam width antenna. Uh, once again, performance is a key criteria here. Uh, the radars, the present generation radars, this is mechanical beam, so it uses a single antenna. Whereas the there are many radars which are using electronic steering, electronic beam steering, and they use arrays of antennas, antenna arrays, and uh, uh, this itself is a big topic by itself. And the, uh, there is a lot of applications, especially in the defense structure, uh, defense, defense applications, and uh, we will cover the arrays as well in this course. Uh, most probably will come to the core structure. So we'll cover the arrays as well. So finally, we come to satellite application where antennas are extensively used in satellite application. For example, the ground station antenna. This is a 32 meter ground station antenna installed by ISRO in Bangalore. It's in Bailalu in Bangalore. Uh, this is generally used for connecting to uh, mass mission or moon missions, interplanetary missions, basically. It's a very high gain antenna, and uh, this is very high performance antenna. Now, the challenge here is not just the antenna design, but the mechanical design. Mechanical steering, uh, the steering of the beam through mechanical structure is also very challenging. And very often, the antenna designers have to interface with the mechanical engineer. So, uh, it's not just an antenna engineer, they have to know the mechanical uh, system also uh, to make the entire system workable. And finally, the satellites itself uses various types of antennas. For example, um, uh, there are three antennas used in mass orbiter mission. So there is a high gain antenna, uh, which is very uh, narrow beam bit used for data communication. Uh, there is low gain antenna shown here, probably a quarter flare helix antenna which is used for telemetry, telecom, and uh, health parameters, basically to control the satellite and to know the health parameters of the satellite. It's a low gain antenna. You also have a medium gain antenna, most probably a patch antenna used here. So there are more than one antennas used in satellite uh, satellites itself. So these are the different applications where you come across 
across antenna there i'm sure you have come across many other applications as well in your daily life what i would suggest is next time whenever you see a wireless product try to identify what type of antenna might be used inside that it could be a pcb antenna it could be a dish antenna horn antenna you can just see what is the shape of the antenna used and uh, clearances across the around the antenna and uh, what type of antenna that may be used there so these are all encouraging signs for antenna engineers so working in antennas it's it's challenging and it's enthusiastic at the same time okay so let us now look into different companies working in different aspects of the antenna applications for example if you take mobile antennas these are called, these are the companies which are working these are just an example there are plenty of companies working on mobile antennas apple samsung lg oneplus and many more i have just not named them here but these companies are called oem companies original equipment manufacturers what they do is they don't design antennas if you are working one of the engineer is an apple probably you will be not designing antennas but you will be an antenna engineer where you will be deriving the specifications for somebody else to design the antenna so you will outsource the antenna design to a third party vendor i will come to such companies and you will design you will determine the specifications of the antenna so you should know how to design the antenna what are the limitations of a particular antenna so all those parameters you should know antenna specifications how, what how is it linked to the system specifications so you should be a system engineer who has an understanding of the antennas also so that will be the requirement in such companies then we have other companies which are working on hid or they are called odms original device manufacturers so these are called oems original equipment manufacturers and these companies are called odms original device manufacturers so these are the companies which actually design antennas so what apple does is they say they go to foxconn so i have not named the foxconn here so they give the order to the foxconn and they give the specifications to the foxconn saying that i want an antenna with uh, this much size and this much gain and uh, the cost has to be this much and you give, design the antennas and give it to us so foxconn becomes an original device manufacturer here and it's the engineers working in foxconn will start working on the antennas designing the antennas so to name other companies like cypress nordic texas instruments analog devices so these are called uh, odm companies original device ma manufacturers they the engineers working in these companies actually design the antennas so if you end up working in these companies uh, you should know you should not only know the antenna specifications and parameters you should also know how to design the antenna in a in a computer aided tool i will come to computer aided tool in the course so we you have to know how to design antennas in a, using a cad tool okay then comes um, okay one feature here is most of these companies working on products which are you know, volume products hence the cost of the antenna has to be very 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 reasonable so that is a critical primary factor that is taken into account while designing the antennas okay so then there are high performance uh, antenna designing companies for base stations like wafway ericsson rfs rfs is a french company we when i was working my when i was doing my phd we had a project for an rfs not an antenna so on a filter and uh, nokia pulse electronics so these are the companies and many more uh, these are the companies working on base station antennas here the key criteria or the primary factor here is the performance cost is not a problem they say okay you can spend a little bit more but the gain has to be so and so and the beam width has to be so and so so the performance becomes a very very important criteria here then we come to defense and aerospace applications there are many r&d labs like uh, in india i'm mainly targeting most of these companies have branches in india so i am just uh, giving you a scenario of the indian market uh before coming to this point let me say that rf and micro engineering and uh, antenna engineering is a hot cake topic in north america uh, anybody who is a very good engineer in rf and microwave and uh, antenna engineer they get very handsome package in north america uh, the same is going to replicate in india as well now with uh, many initiatives from the government uh, the scenario is going to improve in india as well so coming to defense and aerospace applications there are many r&d companies like isro drdo samir bharat electronics astra microwave products the private companies like astra microwave products and data patterns 
uh, so these companies once again work on uh, very specifically on defense and aerospace applications and here again the performance is a very key criteria no uh, relaxation on performance uh, cost is not a problem so it's a very mix and match kind of uh, scenario in antenna there is no one perfect solution or one perfect engineer for every different application uh, so the keys the skill sets required will change depending on the application okay let us conclude the job scenario with a very brief um, uh, summary like i just googled it in november and found out that there are 82 positions available in linkedin for antenna engineers Times job says there are 22, 29 positions and indeed has 118 positions and I'm sure there are much more positions than what I have named here. So what, what is the key requirement for an antenna engineer just to give you an example just to give you an overview. Uh, I just took one example from LinkedIn and it says it requires antenna engineer for ACE technologies in Hyderabad, India. Uh, what are the requirements? So the candidate should have a very strong background in microwave communications, RF engineering and antenna engineering. It's not R, it's all and. That means you should know microwave and RF engineering and you should know antenna engineering also. There should be a, you should, the candidate should have a strong background in antenna specifications, very important. You should understand what are the antenna specifications, especially in the area of base station because this company works in base station and millimeter wave antennas and massive MIMO antennas. Finally, you want, if they require MS, MTech or PhD degree in RF engineering and antenna engineering. It's a very good sign, right? So higher education is being considered and valued in India with the current scenario. So this is a very good sign or signature as well. So this was a very brief, very brief uh, introduction about job scenario of of, uh, antenna engineers in India. Let me say that uh, the requirements for the skill set will be antenna engineering and RF engineering simultaneously. So you should know matching networks, how to design the matching networks, and you should know how to design the antenna. Okay, so let us go to uh, anybody want have any clarifications? Do you want any clarification from me, or am I going too fast? You can just feel free to stop me. I will just uh, take a few seconds uh, for everybody to settle down with whatever topic we have covered as of now. And if you want any clarification from me, please feel free to ask me now. So one query, sir. Please go ahead. Sir, what all books you'll be referring for the course, sir? It will come. It will come in the uh, course structure. Right. Okay, so we will go with the course structure now. So the base, what is the prerequisite for this course structure? So the prerequisite is basics of antenna theories. So we are not going to cover the basics once again. Uh, sorry, I'm, we are not going to cover all of the basics once again. We will touch uh, the basics mainly on antenna parameters or antenna spe uh, specifications. We will touch those topics in the introductory classes, in the starting introductory classes. And then uh, if you have taken uh, ECN 331 antenna theory course in IIT Roorkee or any equivalent course in your undergrad, that will be very helpful. If you have forgotten about it, it's okay. It's a long time you have forgotten about it. Uh, you can just brush it up just to uh, have a, uh, just you can appreciate the classes that we will be covering from the next onwards. So you can brush up the antenna theory. Uh, let me just be, uh, have a watch on the time as well. Okay, so you please brush it up uh, the, the, the antenna theory course in your undergrad course. Okay, now it comes a very important aspect. I want your opinion here. Uh, coming to the weightage, how should we structure this course? I have three options for you. I will take each one of your opinion. So the option one is to go with 80% theory and 20% practical. Option two is 50% theory and 50% practical. Option three is 20% theory and 80% practical. What do you mean by theory and practical, by the way? Theory consists of analytical means of designing the antenna. That means we study the antenna, we will cover the antenna the uh, theoretical aspects, no doubt about it. But it will mainly focus on analytical means. Analytical means when I say probably 30, 40 years back when computers were not easily accessible to every one of us and softwares were not available, powerful softwares were not available, uh, people used to design antennas using analytical means using paper pen and mathematical tool 
and then they used to build the antenna uh, take it to the lab test the antenna if it works it's great if it doesn't work come back to the table once again redesign the antenna go back to the lab and do an iterative process of empirical designs so that's the theoretical way of doing it as a theoretical way of analyzing the antenna basically using analytical tools the say practical means is by using simulation tools what do you mean by simulation tool today there are very powerful computer uh, simulation tools which will design the antenna which where you can 3d you can design the antenna in a complete 3d structure and then you can simulate the antenna and then uh, you can go with the first shot you can design uh, the antenna in the computer cat tool you can build the antenna and you can go with the first shot and it works so that's a practical way of doing and before uh, ending up this particular topic let me tell you that if you were working in as an antenna engineer in industry today uh, your boss or your supervisor will not agree with theoretical means of designing the antenna he will ask you show me the cat tool where you show the parameters before building the antenna and they are going to emphasize on the cat tool so since i worked in industry so i have an experience about it so this is a practical means where we use a cat tool for analyzing the antenna we will be analyzing the antenna and designing the antenna either using cat tool or using analytical methods uh, end end point is cat tool is preferred in industry analytical means is more of an academic interest so let me ask each one of you we have 15 more minutes in the class so let me try to complete it by today itself this introductory class so i will ask each one of you and you can give your opinion so let me uh, uh, summarize it like option 1 is 80% theory option 2 is 50% theory option 3 is 20% theory so aradhana what is your uh, view on this how should we uh, structure the course so for me i think designing plays a key role i mean in the industry or for future career prospect as well so i think uh, designing not just the simulation part but i think if if we can go for one shot in fabrication as well and testing it getting it tested so that we can gain the confidence i think that should be the approach that we can have uh, so, so which option would you prefer here 20 80% sir 20 80% option 3 third option third option okay uh, ajay what is your opinion please uh, by by the way i just want to your options very quickly because uh, we have to wrap up the class in under 10 minutes uh, sir i think there should be a balance sir. i will go with second sir 50 50% sir 50% okay gajesh sir uh, second option second option harish sir i will go with second option second option um, hazim Because uh, actually, I support the second option. Second option. Okay. Yeah. Second uh, option. Since, yeah. Yes. Yes. Please go ahead. Okay, Kalyan. Uh, sir, I also uh, support the second option. It will cater to the needs of all. Sir. Okay. Thank Thank you, Mahima. Uh, so for me, third one. Third one. Okay, Manmatish. Third one, sir. Third one. Third one. Uh, Rohit. Uh, sir, for me, it's third one. Third. And Siddharth. Sir, third one. Third. And Saurabh. Sir, I feel analyti analytical skills are equally important. So, second one, sir. Second. Okay. Thank you, students, for your opinion. So I'll just uh, make a quick count. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. OK, so, so it looks like uh, we will go with option two. That is 50 percent, 50 percent. But what I will do is I will uh, I will give more emphasis to CAD tool also during the course so that even though it is option two, there will be more emphasis on the CAD. So we will cover all the analytical aspects also in the course. So to as much as possible, we will not make it unnecessary more complicated. We will give more importance to practical way of designing the antennas. Okay, thank you. So we will go with the course structure. We will continue the course structure.
so the course is a four credit course it has three theory course and one tutorial the tutorial is a so we will club both the tutorial and simulation based we will club it in the same category uh, so initially there won't be tutorial classes at least for a couple of weeks which is monday afternoon class will not be there because i want to cover the uh, theory first and then go into the tutorial so monday afternoon class i will schedule it maybe from january end onwards i will start scheduling the monday afternoon classes initially there will not be monday afternoon classes uh, the examination there are three aspects to the examination so continuous evaluation midterm evaluation and end term evaluation so the continuous evaluation has 25% weightage we will give one or two assignments and midterm evaluation also has 25% weightage it will be a open book examination of course because it is already an online course but we will also have a cad based evaluation it end term evaluation will also be 50% it has 50% weightage so the cad tool as i told is a very important aspect in the in this course so what i will suggest you all of you is uh, you please get familiarized with cst cat tool you have to have access to this cat tool if you are already in campus you can write an email to icc and copy it to me and uh, they will give you access to the cat tool cst micro studio write an email to icc uh, if otherwise if you are not in campus there is a student version of cst micro studio which is available in their website or somehow you have to have an access to the CAD, this particular cat tool cst microwave studio please no make a note of that or any equivalent cat tool is okay if you are already uh, familiar with the other different cat tools but cst is what we'll be preferring and cst is what industry prefers in antennas assignment will be one antenna uh, sorry one assignment there will not be two assignments most surely there will be only one assignment one very good assignment we will give most of the learning my belief is most of the learning happens in the assignment so assignments will be cad based assignment so we will cover a few topics on simulation in the class so you don't have to uh, fear that if you don't have a, if you are not familiar with the cad tool especially cst microwave studio we will cover it in the course a few simulations but if you already have it start working on the cst microwave studio there are a lot of youtube videos available how to design the antennas in cst microwave studio you can become familiarized with it you can get familiarized with it and uh, please have access to cst microwave studio that is my request to all of you it is very essential in this course both for uh, assignment for a midterm examination and for end term examination so the exams will be a little bit tough the grading will be a little bit relaxed but the examinations will be a little bit tough i will give you a prior hand information uh, we will cover few topics on simulation in the class and if required we will include cad for the end term and it's not if required we will include cad cad tools in the end term and mid term because it is offline online course if it was the offline course i would have include some analytical aspects but since it's an online course it has it has to have this uh, cad based uh, evaluation only there is no other alternative okay so these will be the topics that we will be am i already late i think we have few minutes left so i don't want to uh, rush it up so we have few we will go we'll come back in the next class and we will we'll cover the course contents and then we'll move to the uh, the actual contents in the next class so so far do you have any clarifications do you want any clarifications on the topics that we have covered today please feel to ask me now with now is it clear so whatever we have covered Uh, let me tell you once again that please have access to CST Microwave Studio. Please, please have access to CST Microwave Studio. If you are in campus, write an email to ICC. Uh, otherwise, if you are outside, you still write an email to ICC and request them for CST access and how it can be done. It is required for the course. Uh, otherwise, there is a student version available in the CST Microwave Studio website itself, uh, or you, it's available also. So you please have access to CST Microwave Studio. so please find out some youtubes uh, youtube videos and uh, see how to design antennas how see the major challenge here is to design 3d modeling of the antenna so that's a major challenge we will touch it in the next class also we will we will cover this slide and then go into the rest of the slides okay so that almost completes today's introductory class so if you have any clarifications if you need any clarifications ask me now we have one more minute left in the class Sir, we have access for HFSS. Is that okay? Or? See, HFSS is also good enough. But the problem with HFSS is uh, you cannot design antenna arrays in the HFSS. If you can design, that will be great. Okay. 
okay sir so if you uh, if you can search it out if you can you can you can if you can design antenna arrays very efficiently in hfss that that will also do so that's why i have written hfss here so but if you since you know hfss it is not very difficult to do csd because it is almost similar so modeling is almost similar so you can just have a brush up with the csd also if you can work the same thing in hfss that will be great and that will be wonderful also right sir any other clarifications so one of you asked you the courses uh, so the books that will be required in this course uh, we will cover it it is there in this particular slide so we will cover it in the next class so we will not rush it up now so we will take we will take it slowly and we will cover it up in the next class okay so, yeah excuse me professor uh, yes please where can i where we can uh, find the link of the book to prepare and study Sorry, where you can find the link for what? For the book. Book. For the textbook, is it? Yeah, textbook, yeah. Textbook, oh yeah, we will cover it in the next class. It means uh, it is a Balanis, it's a standard textbook we'll be using, Balanis fourth edition. So uh, this is available both in the print version and the online version. So if you want, I can share it. I do have the copy, so I can share it also. So it's available in the website also. Is not I think PDF, PDF, it's good, uh, sir. Sorry, what? Uh, PDF, uh, it's available. If it's available, it will be good. Yeah, it is available. It is available. Last time when I checked, it was available. Okay, so with that, we terminate uh, today's class. We'll end today's class. Um, thank you for joining today's introductory class and. Uh, I will schedule the tomorrow's class by today evening, and uh, we will meet tomorrow, and we will re we will we will carry from where we have stopped today. Thank you, thank you, one and all. Thank have you, a good sir. day. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.